You know what? There used to be a time when opening a game box was perhaps one of the most exciting things. Not just unsealing the cartridge from its cardboard tomb, but also going through the colorful documentation. Sometimes there was even a poster or catalog to get us all excited about other games we might want to buy. But lately, it's become nothing more than a formality. We still demand physical packaging, and game companies begrudgingly oblige. Throwing a disc or card in a flimsy plastic case. There's a paper label on the front, but that's about it. It's like a Christmas present wrapped up in old newspaper found in the trash. With many A-list titles having budgets that rival the most expensive Hollywood films, game publishers depend on high sales numbers to recoup the budget. But a physical copy can oftentimes end up in the used bin. The new owner has a fresh game for a good price, but the publisher makes no money on this transaction. So it's no wonder there's a major push by the industry to lean more towards digital sales. It reduces the distribution costs and all but eliminates used copy sales that cut into their revenue. And on the plus side, the customer gets their games quicker. Win-win, right? But what happens when the hardware storing the game dies, and the digital storefront has long been decommissioned, and there was never a physical version of the game made? Too bad, so sad? Many of you will point to Sony's upcoming discontinuation of PlayStation Store access for the PS3, PSP, and Vita as evidence of the benefits of physical distribution over digital. I'll do you one better. Konami's Rebirth series. These Rebirth games, released between 2008 and 2010, were new entries in the Gradius, Castlevania, and Contra series. While maybe not as robust as the full-price games, they were well-received and worthy of their namesakes. But as exclusives for Nintendo's WiiWare service, they went down with it in 2019. As of this video, there is no legitimate or convenient way of obtaining them. And those are just some of several examples. I take a strict preservation approach to all media in as much as I believe everything that was released publicly, be it good or bad, should be saved and available in some form. So it will come as no surprise when I tell you I have a strong preference for physical media whenever possible. And that goes for music, certain movies, and TV series as well. But I can't quite demonize the idea of digital distribution either, because I'm old enough to remember this. You came a thousand miles just for this game? Yes. I've done seven stores a day for three weeks now, and I cannot find it. The last Super Mario Bros. 2 was just sold. I understand that game shortages are less of a problem these days without the dependence on ROM chips. But yet, there's something to be said for not worrying whether the game you want is still in stock at your local store, or having to wait for your mail carrier to deliver it. Also a significant issue is storage. Everything takes up space and there always seems to be limits being reached, leaving me scrambling for new storage solutions. Not so much I would ever think of ditching them, but enough that it does come with its own time and money concerns. And while I still enjoy the routine of placing a record on my turntable while gazing at the cover, the process of putting a disc or game card into my console is far less enthralling. I've been finding myself more inclined to play an old, forgotten game that I could just call up from a menu and have it ready to go in under a minute, rather than having to go through the routine of swapping out a disc. And while being able to sell old games towards the purchase of a new one is only possible with physical copies, the way things are going, it might be a moot point. Many high-profile games are being shipped requiring extensive patches on day one. This threatens to render second-hand copies nigh unplayable if, down the road, these updates are no longer available. And will games that rely heavily on frequent internet updates for content such as Animal Crossing New Horizons even be worth playing years from now? Meanwhile, companies like Limited Run Games try to bridge the gap between digital and physical by printing small runs of previously digital-only games for those that prefer the latter. However, due to the nature of its business, there's a small window for buyers to get a copy at a fair, albeit higher than digital, price. If they wait too long, sometimes as little as 24 hours, they may have no choice but to pay scalper prices. The takeaway here is that digital and physical game releases both have their pros and cons. Enough that I can't claim strict allegiance to one or the other. But the harsh reality is that with clear and indisputable financial benefits for game publishers, we're all being dragged kicking and screaming into a digital-only future, like it or not. And to be honest, I'd be open to accept it if these publishers would look into practices that protect customers who invested in the product, while also keeping a sympathetic eye towards future preservation. I can't deny the convenience of the digital model. But I fear it encourages publishers to see games as disposable. There are thousands of hours of film and television that have been lost to history, never to be recovered. But unlike movies and television, 
Games are a relatively young form of entertainment without the same physical storage concerns that doomed film reels or videotapes. There's little excuse for any game to completely disappear other than greed and indifference. Well, I guess expired licenses too, but that's an entirely other complicated matter involving contracts and lawyers and that's well above my pay grade. Are you all about physical copies? Or are you okay with digital downloads of your game library? Let me know in the comments. Or, again, in the words of Richard N. Hughes, What's your opinion? We'd like to know. Now I know how you're spending the holidays That's watching right. Nintendo. Playing Nintendo. <laughs> Playing Nintendo. Thank you, John. Now on to a much more uh, serious report. You can get nine cartridges, 187 Ooh, games. Blackjack. <laughs> I'd like an Atari. Sorry. Only our demonstrators left. Mine. No, George. Mine.